Hi everyone! In the last video, we explored the first step in Terrigen's rendering process, the creation and use of the GI cache files in order to be able to calculate the global illumination in our scene. In this video, we'll continue where we left off and look at the render parameters on the Quality tab and Advanced tabs. Some of these parameters pertain to how Terrigen subdivides surfaces of the terrain and other displaceable type objects that might be in our scene, which in turn determines their levels of detail and the quality displayed in the rendered image. Other parameters are overall image sampling controls that affect the image quality of almost everything in the scene. In the render settings, under the Quality tab, the MicroPoly detail value determines the level of detail of a displaceable surface, such as the terrain or a body of water. It does this by breaking up the surface into micropolygons, which are usually not much bigger than the pixels in the rendered image, or even smaller if the micropoly detail is set quite high. The renderer aims to produce micropolygons with a fairly uniform size in terms of pixels, allowing for dynamic resolution that automatically adapts to how near or far the camera is from the surface, as well as the resolution of the image. The level of detail will impact the render time of an image. Generally speaking, Low values result in lower render times but less detail, and high values result in longer render times with more detail. For most of our shot, we're traveling at an altitude of approximately 10,000 feet, or 3,000 meters, and the topography of the terrain ranges from 20 kilometers away from the camera in the valleys at the start of the shot to just over 1 kilometer away at the end of the shot as the top of the volcano comes into frame. Even so, Terrigen adaptively subdivides the terrain according to the camera position in each frame to maintain a highly detailed terrain throughout the shot. The micropolygon detail setting allows us to fine-tune the amount of detail to balance render times against image quality. After making a number of test renders, we determined that a micropolygon detail value of 0.8 would be optimal for our HD renders, and we found that 0.6 was sufficient for our 4K renders. Below the micropolygon detail parameter is the anti-aliasing parameter. Anti-aliasing is one of the most important settings for controlling the quality of a rendered image because it affects almost everything in the image in some way. Low anti-aliasing values tend to produce lower quality images but result in faster render times, so they are useful for rendering test frames. Higher values improve the image quality but cause rendering to take more time to finish. As we see in these rendered images, too little anti-aliasing can result in jagged or pixelated edges on 3D objects and terrain. Low anti-aliasing values can result in too much noise in the clouds and atmosphere. On the other hand, too much anti-aliasing can negatively impact render times because the anti-aliasing value determines the number of samples taken for every pixel of the image. Sampling is the terminology for what the anti-aliasing parameter does. To better understand what goes into sampling and anti-aliasing, Click on the Edit Sampling button to open the Render Pixel Sampler window. At the top of the window, the anti-aliasing parameter is presented once again, in order for you to conveniently make changes to the value in this window as well as the previous window. The anti-aliasing value represents the square root for the maximum number of primary arrays that are traced per pixel of the image. For example, if the anti-aliasing value is set to 5, the maximum number of samples per pixel would be 25. For high definition images resolution, which is usually 1920 by 1080 pixels, this would result in a maximum number of over 50 million samples for the entire image. In order to optimize the actual number of samples needed to produce an acceptable image, a technique called adaptive sampling is used to detect where the anti-aliasing is most needed in the image. The first sampling level parameter determines the minimum number of samples to use per pixel. The parameter presents a menu list of six choices which are written as fractions, ranging from max samples, non-adaptive, meaning the maximum number of samples will be used no matter what, to over 1,024 first samples, which means that the minimum number of samples will be that fraction of the maximum number of samples. You can think of the first sample level as an evenly spaced grid that overlays the pixel, dividing it up into subpixels. For instance, an anti-aliasing value of 2 results in a maximum number of 4 samples per pixel, and if the first sampling level value is set to one quarter first samples, then the minimum number of samples would be one, or one fourth of the maximum number of samples. Terjan makes it easy to see the results of these calculations in the samples per pixel display, 
which is updated each time a change is made. The pixel noise threshold value provides a threshold for determining if further anti-aliasing refinement is required for the pixel being rendered. In other words, it tells the renderer when it's okay to stop anti-aliasing that part of the image, which happens when the renderer detects the apparent noise level of the pixel being evaluated drops below the threshold amount, or the maximum number of samples has been met. Low values for this parameter mean more refinement needs to take place, and therefore it takes more render time to complete the image. Higher values mean less refinement needs to take place before the threshold is met, so the image renders faster, but the overall image quality may suffer. The trick here is to find the balance that provides the image quality you desire, with the fastest render times. If you uncheck the Customize Sampling checkbox, the two parameters First Sampling Level and Pixel Noise Threshold will return to their default values, which depend on the current anti-aliasing value and which adaptive sampler mode is selected. Note that the higher the anti-aliasing value, the lower the default value for pixel noise threshold. An interesting consequence of adaptive anti-aliasing is that you may be able to reduce render times by increasing other settings in your project to reduce noise at its source, such as the various cloud sampling and atmosphere sampling settings. Again, the trick here is to find a good balance, which depends on the scene. When selecting the standard renderer, two deferred shading options become available. For our shot, we enabled both the defer atmos slash cloud and defer all shading in order to achieve higher quality results by rendering the atmosphere, clouds, and shading along with the ray traced objects in a single render pass. In the latest versions of Terrigen 4, these settings are enabled by default in new projects. Defer all shading can be disabled to cause the terrain and other displaceable surfaces to be rendered using an older method by shading individual micropolygons. If defer atmos slash cloud is also unchecked, atmosphere and clouds are shaded once per micropolygon as well. However, it is recommended to enable both of these parameters to unify the adaptive sampler across all parts of the scene and make shading quality independent from the micropolygon detail. Terrigen provides two flavors of motion blur, 2D motion blur and 3D motion blur. 2D motion blur is applied as a post-process and produces smooth-looking, but not always realistic results. Whereas 3D motion blur, also known as in-camera motion blur, is more accurate and captures complex motion more correctly, but tends to need higher render quality settings to look smooth. For our shot, we chose 3D motion blur because it is better at handling parallax between semi-transparent clouds and other parts of the scene. If you prefer, you can also render images without motion blur and export motion vector data, which let you apply 2D motion blur in third-party compositing software. It's important to understand that in the current versions of Terrigen, only camera motion blur is calculated and not object motion blur. In the case of our shot, this is fine because the render of the 3D aircraft object takes place in a third-party software package. Since we're compositing our Terrigen renders with those from another rendering software, we need to be aware of setting the camera's motion blur parameters to be the same in both software packages. To do this, open the settings for the camera used to render the shot. Under the Blur tab, the position parameter is used to determine the point in time per frame the camera shutter opens, and the length value determines how long the camera shutter remains open for a given frame. To match the motion blur of our 3D aircraft element, which was rendered in Lightwave, we chose Start on Frame for the position parameter and 0.5 for the length value. This means the camera shutter will open at the beginning of each frame and remain open for half the amount of time between one frame and the next, or 1 48th of a second, because our shot is set up at 24 frames per second. And keep in mind that the camera is traveling at about Mach 2 in this shot. So while the camera shutter has remained open, the camera has traveled approximately 340 meters. We've seen how Terrigen subdivides the surfaces of the terrain automatically, with the micropoly detail parameter controlling the level of detail in image space. The renderer also needs to calculate shadows that are cast by the terrain. Click on the Advanced tab. Shadows, reflections, refractions, and global illumination are calculated using the Ray Tracer engine, and the Ray Tracer maintains a separate version of the subdivided terrain and other displaceable surfaces. This is called the Subdiv Cache. The ray tracer needs to see all of the terrain, even areas not visible to the camera, 
because those other areas might still cast shadows onto the visible parts of the scene. Terrigen gives us some control over where the subdivision detail is concentrated, and by how much, so that we can optimize our render times. The RAID detail region is the area of the subdiv cache where the displaceable surfaces are fully subdivided for the ray tracer. Polygons outside this area are usually subdivided much less. The parameters options allow you to tell Terrigen how to set this region, and range from nothing being fully subdivided to everything being fully subdivided, even in areas unseen from the camera's point of view. The detail in cropped region and detail in camera settings fully subdivide areas within the camera view, while areas outside the camera view are subdivided much less. This attempts to optimize render times by concentrating the level of detail where it is most seen. However, sometimes this can cause problems if objects or terrain outside the camera's field of view are casting shadows onto or being reflected by items within the camera's field of view. The 360 degree detail optimal setting subdivides the area in the direction the camera is looking the fullest amount and gradually decreases a level of subdivision to 33% for all areas directly behind the camera. Even at 33%, the level of detail is higher than the detail in cropped region and detail in camera settings for areas outside the camera field of view. The 360 degree detail highest setting subdivides everything uniformly around and behind the camera, providing the highest level of detail. This setting is rarely needed and can produce very long render times with normal perspective cameras. For our shot, we set this parameter to 360 degree detail optimal so that the subdivision detail is highest in the direction that the camera is looking towards, then gradually decreases to 33% of the highest detail behind the camera. Now click on the Subdiv Settings button to open the Render Subdiv Settings window. The parameters listed here have to do with how Terrigen subdivides the surface of terrain and other displaceable objects at render time. Normally, you do not have to adjust them. The fully adaptive parameter allows the surface's micropolygons to be subdivided more heavily when the surface is stretched by displacements, and less heavily when the surface is compressed in screen space. For still images, this is a good feature, but it can also cause changes from one frame to the next in an animation. So, in some cases, it can be beneficial to disable it. Disabling the parameter allows the amount of subdivision to be based on the undisplaced surface, which is quite regular and therefore more stable for animations. But for our shot, we kept this enabled for optimal detail and render times. The Force All Edges parameter eliminates the gaps formed between micropolygons when each is subdivided to a different level along a shared edge. When enabled, the shared edges are subdivided to the same level. By default, this parameter is unchecked or off because it contributes to a slight increase in render times. But for animated shots, it's recommended that the parameter be enabled in order to remove the artifacts caused by the gaps. The Micro Vertex Jittering parameter helps to reduce the appearance of straight lines in displaced surfaces. Disabling this parameter for animations produces a more stable animation. The Detail Jittering parameter can cause quite noticeable changes from one frame to another. So for animated shots, it's recommended to disable this parameter. The Detail Blending parameter controls the amount of blending between levels of detail as the distance between the camera and surface changes. Higher blending values increase rendering time. For still images, it's fine to set this to zero. But for animated shots, it's recommended to use values between 0.5 and 1. The Displacement Filter parameter controls the amount of blending on displacements between different levels of detail. This parameter also depends on the Detail Blending value and the recommendation is to keep this value at 1. The Jitter Shading Points on Visible Micropolygons parameter only applies when Defer All Shading is disabled in the standard renderer. It chooses a random point on each micropolygon to calculate lighting and shaders, which provides a more natural image. However, because this can change from one frame to the next, it should be disabled for animated shots. Otherwise, it could introduce noise into the rendered image sequence. The Ray Detail Multiplier parameter controls the size of the micropolygons as seen by the rays from the ray tracer. This includes reflections, refractions, shadows, global illumination, and the global illumination prepass. Values lower than 1 mean larger micropolygons and less detail, and therefore faster render times.
The Stabilize Ray Detail and Motion parameter is used to blend between levels of detail when calculating shadows and reflections, as the level of detail changes for the terrain as the camera moves. As micropolygons are generated by the ray tracer, they are stored in memory in a subdivision cache, so they don't have to be recalculated all the time. Normally, Terragen will automatically decide how much memory to use for the subdivision cache, and it bases this on the number of threads you use to render, since each thread is allocated a portion of the cache. The override size of subdivision cache parameter allows you to override this amount, and if you want the cache size to be created in its entirety at the start of the render, you can enable the pre-allocate subdivide cache checkbox. Keep in mind that setting the subdiv cache file to large can unnecessarily take up memory that could be used for populations and other objects in the project. Let's go back to the main render settings and look at the sequence slash output tab. This is where you set the output path for the rendered images and file format options for EXR and TIFF file formats. as well as the frame range and frame step to render. It's also worth noting the animation check button located near the bottom of the panel. When clicked, Terrigen will perform a check to see if the parameters discussed in the Advanced tab and Subdiv settings window are set to optimal settings for an animated shot, and if not, offer to change the parameters for you automatically. As you can see, rendering an image is a complex task and Terrigen provides much control over fine-tuning the process in order to optimize the render times. In our next video, we'll look at the Render Layers feature in Terrigen 4 Professional, which allows us to save additional images and data during the render process for further manipulation in post-production. We hope you've enjoyed this video and learned something new. Thanks for watching.